Okay, so our last speaker this afternoon is Greg Bergsy, who will tell us about enumerative applications of non-reductive non GIDT. Yeah, so I guess uh, a little bit everybody is tired of, of uh, non-reductive GIT by now. So um, uh, th many thanks for the invitation and the opportunity to give a talk here. And uh, I would like to thank um, to Vicky and Eloise to, for the nice uh, introduction and explaining the background. So I will certainly rely on their, their talks, but I will try yeah, I will try to explain them as much as possible about what I need. So, um, so because this is kind of the third third day into a online uh, workshop, and uh, it's quite late in the afternoon at least here. So, I, I feel I should start with some summary and and say something interesting, not to lose too many people. So, so um, let me start with a short summary. So, what I'm going to talk about so the goal is actually to uh, is a report on some recent work on two seemingly unrelated problems and these are some classical questions in geometry and complex geometry so the first one the first uh, uh, circle of questions is uh, related to degeneracy loci or locus of uh, holomorphic maps and so the and the problem is the following Roughly, so you have a, a holomorphic map F between two complex manifolds M and N. Then um, the Tom polynomial, um, and we fix a singularity class, is, is, uh, I will explain later. Then natural question actually we can ask is, uh, what is the locus in the source space? So, uh, sorry, this is, should be N to M, is it a, it's a bit, yeah, it, so it should be end to end, but I hope this is not, uh, I, I use the I consequent in the rest of this uh, talk, but it's end to end. So the source space is N. Um, so we look at the locus in N where this generic map F has a given class of singularity. And so we, look, we, we try to calculate its cohomology class. So they represent the cohomology element in, in, the, in uh, of N. And the question is, is a classical question in global singularity theory to determine this locus and this cohomology class. So the second question is, um, is related to hyperbolicity. So it's a hyperbolicity of the projective hypersurfaces. We say that um, the complex manifold M is uh, hyperbolic if there is no non-constant uh, holomorphic curves in M. So every uh, holomorphic uh, map from C to M uh, degenerates to a point. And so this famous conjecture of Kobayashi uh, from 1970 uh, tells us that um, our generic smooth projective hypersurface, this is sitting X in Pn plus one. Um, so it's dimensional uh, N. If the, is this, the degree is high enough, then it's hyperbolic. So it's broad, broadly hyperbolic. And it's um, expected that the right bound for the degree bound uh, is linear in the dimension of, of this hypersurface. So it must be 2m plus 1. That's what uh, is expected. And this is what is believed as the right bound. So any, any hypersurface of degree at least 2m plus 3 is, uh, is hyperbolic. So these two problems seem to be completely unrelated. But there is a link. And uh, the, namely, the, in the heart of the, these problems actually sits a, a moduli, a moduli space, and the, the moduli of uh, jets of holomorphic maps. And I will explain what this is. Um, but this is a non-reductive moduli space. And, um, and the key technical ingredient uh, uh, of this talk and, and of this work, recent work, is, is, uh, is the intersection theory of, of these uh, jet moduli spaces. And in particular, the, you know, intersection theory in the sense of that uh, we, we, we can use, um, we, we actually develop some sort of non-reductive uh, Jeffrey Kerman type uh, integration formally and residues, and that's what we can use. So, <clears throat> so the results, which I will talk about, uh, I can summarize here. So uh, last year, we, uh, with the joint work uh, with uh, Francis, we proved this uh, polynomial Kobayashi conjecture. And uh, this year, uh, which this is a work which uh, should be uh, online in a few days, is that we have, I, I um, 
develop some new uh, closed uh, formulae for uh, Tom polynomials of Morian singularities. I just uh, let me have a historical remark. Um, so we, we heard about a lot about this uh, non-reductive GIT, and uh, but let me mention that Tom polyno polynomials and this first problem actually played a very important role in in at least in from my perspective in in the developing this non-reductive GIT. So um, so this actually was one of the because this reparameterization group is a sort of a U hat uh, group, so it has is a C star extension of a unipotent group. It somehow that's that was this very concrete example which hinted back in 2012 that um, we need this uh, C star extension. So you, it's, we should rather work with a, a U hat than working with just a unipotent group action. So there it makes a big difference, right? And that's somehow the upshot here is that. Uh, actions of uh, U-hat groups, so which have some uh, C-style extensions, behave much better than, uh, than orbit spaces for, for simple unipotent group actions. Anyway, so this is the summary. So um, uh, I will start with, uh, you know, in the first part of this talk, I will, I will talk about the Tom polynomials. And in the second part, I will uh, turn on to turn to uh, this uh, hyperbolicity question, and then I, in the end, I will state the, the results. So let's start with uh, singularities, and um, so we um, so we we'll talk about singularities of holomorphic maps between complex manifolds, and uh, we fix three parameters: so k, n, and m, and we fix an algebra which is going to be a nilpotent algebra A which is finite dimensional over C. It's a complex nilpotent algebra. And in this talk, we will just take the simplest possible. You can imagine this is just this uh, generated by one element. So this is uh, correspond to the Morin singularity. So this is AK. So an important uh, notion I will actually use in this talk is this uh, JKNM. So this stands for this uh, space of jets of uh, holomorphic maps from uh, Cn to Cm. So in other words, you take uh, uh, m tuples of polynomials in n variables, right? So these are p1 up to pm, these are polynomials in uh, n, n variables, and we have m of them. And we, as, and we actually just uh, fix the degree to be uh, less than equal than k, so that's why this k is, so this is just k jets of polymorphic maps. And we will assume that uh, these are without constant terms. So the origin in CN is sent to the origin in CM. Okay. So um, then uh, we will um, take a, a subset sigma, which actually, uh, or sigma A, if you like. So these are the set of, these are those points, sorry, um, those. Uh, polynomials, so polynomial maps in sitting in JK and M. So these are the jets. Most local algebra is isomorphic to A. So we remember we fixed this uh, algebra here. And then uh, we can actually ask for uh, this polynomial to have a local algebra. So this is just the quotient of this maximum ideal by the ideal generated by the coordinate functions. And so the reason why this is a, an interesting object in this jet space, and this is actually uh, invariant under uh, this uh, reparameterization group of uh, CN and CM, um, which acts um, uh, by conjugation on this map. So this is something which is invariant under this, uh, well, I will denote this by diff uh, K later, but this uh, product of diff, this is actually just diff morphism groups, so reparameterization groups. So I, after this introduction of, of uh, these notations, we, I, I will just really uh, try to motivate this uh, problem. So we have a complex, uh, we have a holomorphic map F between complex manifolds, so N and M of dimension N and M. So we look at this locus Z of F, where uh, those points in the source space N, where the, the, the jet of this F belongs to sigma, right? So sigma was just a subset in JK and M. So we can ask for those, we can ask for this uh, locus ZF where the, those points where this uh, jet uh, belongs to sigma. 
So this is a this is a subset in in uh, N. And then uh, going back to the 1950s, uh, Thomas actually uh, showed that for sufficiently generic uh, F, this is a subset which represents a cohomology class. And in fact, uh, there is a structure in this. So there is a value defined polynomial, I just denoted by M dag A, in two uh, n plus m variables, which are symmetric in the first and symmetric in the sec in the last m variables, such that this class is equal to this. When we substitute the uh, churn uh, root of uh, of the tangent space of n and the pullback of m, then we get this cohomology class in in uh, uh, in in n. So, in other words, we have. Um, we have a universal polynomial, which I know by M deg for a reason I will explain in a second, such that uh, this uh, multi degree is equal to, um, uh, sorry, this is what I mean, called as a multi degree actually, or uh, is, is that this class which we are looking at is equal to a, a universal polynomial, uh, and we substitute into this universal polynomial the churn numbers of Tn and, and the pullback of Tn. And in fact, uh, a little bit more is true. So, uh, it was shown by uh, Hafliger and Koshinsky uh, that uh, in fact, this dependence on, on these uh, churn numbers is very restricted in the sense that um, the, this um, polynomial, this, this um, class Z of F is gonna be a polynomial in the churn classes of the difference bundle. So you define this uh, churn classes of the difference bundle here of Tm and and uh, and uh, Tn and Fg of and F star Tm. And then uh, this uh, polynomial actually depends only on the on the churn classes of the difference bundle. So that's why we call this TPA is just a Tom polynomial. So it's a polynomial uh, in, in these uh, churn classes. Now, this is what I uh, put down here. So I just copied here to, to remember. So what is this uh, universal polynomial? So this universal polynomial M dag A is just uh, called the multi-degree or equivalent Poincare dual of, this is I put here, this is just the equivalent Poincare dual of this uh, class sigma K, which corresponds to the algebra A K in this case, if, if it's a Morian singularity. So this is a subset, this sigma k is a GLN times GLM uh, invariant subset of this JK and M, this jet space. So this is, uh, and in this case, we can define this equivalent prime carry dual, which will be actually a, a polynomial in M plus one variables. So I will just put down here the general setup of, for um, how these uh, equivalent prime carry duals are defined or multi degrees, if you like. So we have a vector space V, it's a complex vector space, which uh, a group action G is uh, in this case is, is just the product of uh, this GLN and GLM. And then we have a G invariant closed sub variety Sigma. Then the equivalent cohomology, which was also, which also uh, came up in Eloise's talk. So uh, is uh, for a vector space V, which is just the same as the equivalent cohomology for P of a point. And this is just a polynomial ring. Uh, in uh, and in particular, in in this case, if for GLM and GLM, this uh, equivalent cohomology ring is just the um, uh, polynomial ring in n plus one m variables. So, what is this multi-degree? Uh, so, you see, we have this. Um, uh, yeah. We take the cross product of EG and sigma over G, and that it sits in, in this universal uh, bundle over uh, in uh, with fiber V. And then it's just basically the ordinary Poincare dual of uh, this space in this bigger space. So that's the, the topological, that's kind of the topological definition of the equivariant, equivariant uh, Poincare dual. So, um, it's important that this can be computed using integration. So uh, Michel Van actually pr uh, proved that there is an equivariant Tom class. So it's actually an equivariant uh, 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 class of B such that the 
uh, the smooth degree of uh, sigma in V is equal to the integral of over sigma of this Tom class. So this is actually of a top dimensional form. Um, and uh, its explicit form is not important in this case. It just tells you that, um, that there is such a form that such you integrate of that, then you get something which has a degree equal to the co-dimension of sigma in V. And that's actually what we want. So here's a very, uh, uh, it's a toy example actually, working with a, a three-dimensional torus action on C4. Um, sorry, um, it's actually, uh, I don't know why, so just uh, we, have a, we have a torus action of, uh, it's a C4, shouldn't C4, acting on C4 with four weights. They satisfy, well actually, no, it's a, it's a three-dimensional because they satisfy these two, um, this condition, so the weights uh, of the first two, some of the first two weights is equal to the sum of the second two. And then we uh, look at this uh, sigma, which is just this um, uh, uh, singular uh, 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 three-dimensional sub uh, hypersurface sitting in C4. And we can deform it uh, using a, a, a flat deformation into uh, the uni union of two subspaces. And in this case, whenever you have such a deformation, it's, you know, we can prove that this equivalent Boyan-Carré dual is just the sum of the, of the duals of the subspaces. And if for a subspace, it's just actually equal to the product of the normal weights. So in this case, it's just uh, eta one plus eta two, which is the same as eta three plus eta four. So this is just a toy example of how the, these uh, equivalent, equivalent, equivalent uh, duals work. Now let's go, come back to the, um, the Tom polynomials and this uh, subset sigma k. So this is just, um, again, I just put it down here again, is that uh, sigma k is uh, equal to those chats where uh, was local algebra is isomorphic to this one dimensional algebra. And then in this case, this Tom polynomial is given by uh, this equivalent multi-degree, sorry, this equivalent, equivalent point dual of sigma k sitting in, in the jet space. The question is how to compute this. So, um, um, in order to handle this problem, actually, we need a nice model for uh, sigma k. It's you know we it's a very uh, it's actually um, um, first of all uh, I'm not uh, entirely precise here because we should take the closure of sigma k, which is not a closed uh, sub, uh, subset in in the jet space, and this closure is highly singular. So it's 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 um, the existing techniques actually not easy it, are not easy to apply. So we need a nice model for the sigma k to handle. So one of them is this test curve model of uh, Porteous as Gaffney, which tells you that uh, this uh, set is actually birational at least. So there is an open then subset of the sigma k, um, which consists of those jets which admit a test curve. So that's why that's where the test curve model comes from. So it admits a test curve, which is a, a map from C to Cn gamma, so that this composition is equal to zero. So that's why we call this a test curve model. So phi, which is an element of this jet space, so it's a jet from Cn to Cm that sits in this sigma k, if and only, uh, well, at least for in a, in a dense part, uh, if and only if there is a, a gamma, it's a test curve, so it's a curve in C and it's a, it's a jet. We're talking about jets so that the composition is, is zero. So, and then the observation is the following. So assume that you have this picture here, right? So it's the composition of these two maps is zero. Then of course, if you reparameterize uh, this complex line using any polynomial reparameterization, which I denoted by um, uh, diff k, so diff k is just a is just a set of um, germs from C to C. It's actually a group. So then, then uh, we can reparameterize this curve using a different morphism reparameterization of C. And of course, then uh, this uh, reparameterized curve is the composition for that is again zero, right? So, so if you have this composition zero, then uh, then the composition with the the reparameterized curve is also zero, right? So. So that's the picture here, right? So in other words, what does it tell us? That uh, it tells us that this uh, test curve is unique up to 
only up to a different morphism group, right? A, a polynomial repartization. This is just a very, very simple uh, game that we, we are playing here, right? So, but uh, it explains that it just tells you that it, the image of a holomorphic curve, you know, you can reparameterize the, the source space uh, and you can use any polynomial repartization, then the image of, the, of this curve doesn't. Uh, did not change. So, so we have this uh, corollary, which tells us that at least an open dense part of, of sigma k fibers uh, over uh, this quotient of the jet space. So these are reg means the regular jets, which means the first derivative so is non-zero. So the linear part is, is non-zero. So that's actually a quotient. And then uh, this uh, set, this uh, uh, Sigma k fibers over this with uh, linear fibers. But we haven't seen that this, this has linear fibers, which is crucial, but I, I will not explain that, but actually not that good. So in 2012, um, with uh, Andras Senesh, we, um, it's actually a work, this is my PhD thesis. So we show that uh, there is a injective map from this quotient to some Grassmannian. So this is a Grassmannian into some, uh, into into in, this is a vector space right but uh, also a gln module which is important such that uh, we can compute this uh, tom polynomial so this uh, Poincaré dual as an integral and that somehow transform this uh, calculation into an integral over the image of this map of some of the, of some form and this form is actually um, i couldn't put it here but is the top is the euler class of the of some bundle uh, and this is just, you know, there is a tautological rank K bundle here, and we transfer it by the CM, which is just uh, as, a, as a GLM module. And you take the Euler class of that, which oh, I, it's missing from this formula, but we take the Euler class of that, and then that's what we integrate. So, um, so and, and the observation is the following. So, so this is not crucial in the in these calculations, and actually this came later. So, but we we can easily see that this image in this Grassmannian is actually the same as some uh, distinguished component of the Hilbert scheme of k plus one points on Cn. It's a component of the puncture Hilbert scheme supported at uh, the origin, and uh, and in fact what we get here is the is some sort of tautological integral over this uh, Hilbert scheme, not over the whole Hilbert scheme because. In this case, the Hebrew scheme of, over CN is, of course, highly, uh, it's not uh, an irreducible, not uh, no uh, smooth object. So it's a complicated uh, object with several different components. But at least there is a distinguished component, which we call the curvilinear component, where this integral is just a, a tautological integral over that. So I think the upshot here is that, is that uh, these Tom polynomials can be uh, uh, translated as uh, being uh, tautological integrals over over some components of the Hebrew scheme, and then uh, of course, uh, so we studied this uh, uh, image in the in the Grassmannian, and then applying uh, localization and some residue vanishing theorem. So we we came up with the formula for these uh, Tom polynomial syndrome. Now the problem is that uh, with this formula was that, and even since that is a problem, is that we have a very poor understanding of some component of the formula, and this is what we call this QK polynomial. And to understand this, uh, to to this component, we need a very deep Borel geometry, and that's actually still out of reach. Seems to be out of reach at the moment. So we we can actually formulate reformulate is uh, as a so there is a geometric description of this QK is going to be a, a multi-degree of. So it's, it's got basically a, a, a equations, it depends by equations, which cut, cuts out some border orbit in some, uh, in some vector space, but it's, it's not uh, possible to, to compute it. It's known only until up to K equals five. For K equals six, it's a very long, um, it's, a, it's a huge polynomial. So, uh, so we need some, uh, in order to avoid Borel geometry, so that's somehow the goal, and somehow only use toric geometry, which uh, is more manageable. We need a new approach, and that's where the, uh, this non-reductive GIT comes in. 
So the idea is the following. So we have this uh, curvilinear Hilbert scheme, which sits in this Grassmannian. And then we have a compactification. We can take the trivial compactification of the jet space. So we constructed this phi, but that's not very fine everywhere. Uh, and uh, just on an open part. And so there's this rational map phi. So the idea is the following. We, 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 if you we perform uh, some blow up and we get a, a, a space jet K, I denote it by jet K. And this blow up is kind of diff K, uh, uh, we do it uh, diff K equivariantly. Then, you know, we still get a uh, diff K action on jet K. And uh, if for some reason, um, on the semi-stable locus, this is a non-reductive GIT type semi-stable locus on jet K. This map phi is very defined, so it now gives you a morphism. Then we are in a winning position. So the reason is that uh, because the non-reductive GIT uh, quotient is a categorical quotient, so that automatically implies that there is a morphism from the GIT quotient to this Hilbert scheme. So what we can do, we can uh, trans, you know, we can pull back this integration from uh, the Hilbert scheme to integration of a non-reductive GIT quotient. And that's really nice because then uh, it somehow has a much better intersection theory that uh, we can apply this uh, non-reductive Jeffrey curving formula, which we developed last year. And, uh, and after a second localization and lots of technical uh, issues, um, we can translate it into an iterated residue formula uh, after, and we need a, a residue vanishing term, and that it actually gives you a final formula. So, so I will present this uh, formula and I, in, in the end of my talk. I just wanted to uh, introduce this subject. And I wanted to somehow uh, link it to non-reductive GIT and, and show you how this diffeomorphism group uh, plays a crucial role in this problem. Okay, so that was my, the first part of my talk. So if you have any question, please uh, stop me and I, I'm happy to, to answer. Because what in the next, uh, in the second part, I will talk more about hyperbolicity. So I will again give some brief uh, introduction to this problem. Let me, um, but uh, without uh, the details, of course. So, so we, let me start with a very simple observation is that uh, if you have a curve, a uh, complex curve of genus at least two, so this means that chemical bundle is ample, then any holomorphic map uh, from C uh, to, to this curve is, uh, is uh, degenerate. So it's a constant. one. And the, and the proof is very simple in this case because this uh, holomorphic map factors through the universal cover of C, which is a uh, disk. And so, uh, but, and we know that the obvious theorem that it must be constant because it's a bounded entire holomorphic function. So in contrast, if uh, for elliptic and uh, 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 curves, for instance, uh, they admit non-constant holomorphic maps from C. So what the question is, I guess, uh, one way of approaching this uh, hyperbolicity problem is, what is the um, analog of this uh, simple observation in higher dimensions? So uh, let's assume that X is a complex manifold of dimension N. And we say that, uh, as I already in, uh, introduced this uh, in the first, uh, on the first page, on the first slide, so X is uh, said to be broadly hyperbolic if there is no non-constant entire holomorphic curve from, uh, in X. And so Brody actually showed that uh, this is equivalent to, to Kobayashi uh, uh, hyperbolicity in the sense that Kobayashi pseudometric is a metric, but that's actually, so there is a link to differential geometry, of course, and the whole problem comes from differential geometry. So, um, and these are interesting objects. So hyperbolicity, one reason why hyperbolicity, uh, hyperbolic varieties are interesting is actually that these are uh, linked to the Lang conjecture, which tells that um, if a variety uh, is uh, hyperbolic, then uh, we have only finitely many points over the rationals. So finitely many rational points. Now there is a weaker notion of hyperbolicity. So we say that uh, X is weakly hyperbolic if instead of uh, uh, assuming, uh, like uh, asking that all holomorphic maps are degenerate, we don't want them entirely like fully degenerate, but we want them to be the image to be in a proper sub variety of X. So what we say is that uh, if there is a sub variety, proper sub variety Y in X, which is independent of your, of your holomorphic map, 
such that for any uh, map, the image must sit in Y. So there is a distinguished locus in your X, which is a, which is, which is a proper sub variety, such that any holomorphic curve, uh, the image of any holomorphic uh, map must sit there, right? So that's, that's what we say, it's broadly hyperbolic. That's, what, that's when we call this a weakly hyperbolic variety. So uh, what the, this hyperbolicity has a very like a long-standing and old conjectures and classical uh, conjectures. One of them is the Green Griffiths line conjecture from 1981. So it tells you it, uh, it tells that every projective uh, variety of general type is weakly hyperbolic. And the Kobayashi conjecture, which uh, which uh, is stated for uh, hypersurfaces. So we have a hypersurface, a generic projective hypersurface in PM plus one. If the if uh, this uh, of high degree, so this is uh, sufficiently high, then this is uh, broadly hyperbolic. So now, and that is what I already mentioned. So there is some uh, uh, stipulated number uh, value of these bounds. So for instance, D one is four, D n is two n plus one for n equals two frame four, and D n is two n for n. Uh, uh, for n at least five, so this is a. So the, so you know the upshot is that of, there is a expected uh, bound uh, where uh, hyperbolicity actually follows, and that that's that's the point here is that this d n is linear, in n in the dimension. So uh, but the break some breakthrough result from uh, 2018 of uh, Eric Will and Young. So Reed and Young tells us that if there are, so they actually connect the two to hyperbolicity conjectures. So if there are integers d n such that the GGI conjecture for hypersurfaces of dimension n holds, or for degree at least d n, then the Kobayashi conjecture also holds for hypersurfaces with degree at least d two n minus one. This is a beautiful result which actually uh, connects the two conjectures, and um, and therefore. Um, this is actually just uh, relevant for us because we, we proved the green griffiths line conjecture, the polynomial, polynomial bound, but that actually implies uh, and uh, the Kobayashi conjecture as well. So that's, that's why it's relevant. So some uh, milestones of this uh, problem, but of course, uh, without even trying to be uh, 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 complete. And, 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 uh, and so there's a lot of, um, there's a huge literature of this uh, problem, of course. So, but let me mention just a few my milestones, right? So this first positive answer actually was uh, given by Macmillan for surfaces. And then uh, the, the Mai and CU actually, they worked out the uh, beautiful strategy in the 90s and, and uh, in the early 2000s. So in the, uh, that it's actually a strategy which uses uh, jet differentials and um, I will explain in a bit what these are and so um, in CU in, in 60, uh, 1996 uh, proved the GGI conjecture for hypersurfaces of high degree that without uh, it's a without an explicit um, effective uh, bound on the degree and that was actually done by Diverio, Mac and Russo in 2009 where actually they uh, Prove the first uh, effective bound for in the GGI conjecture that was actually double exponential, and this was later actually uh, improved. But but it, it, it you know this uh, this still uh, remained exponential, and then um, so. Uh, Jean-Pierre Demay proved in, in uh, 2015 that this GGI conjecture is true if in some technical under some technical condition. So if X satisfies a strong general type condition that is related to a certain jet semi-stability property, and then uh, that's what I will not uh, explain. Uh, but and finally in uh, 15 and 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 uh, and the following year in 16, uh, CU and brought back independently they proved this Kobayashi conjecture for sufficiently high degree. Uh, not, um, of course, uh, this year in this time, it was uh, the result of Riedel Young was not known. So these two problems were somehow independent. Uh, the one doesn't imply the other, but uh, so they now it's, of course, a different, uh, we are living in a different times. So, <clears throat> 
So uh, this extractive, uh, the uh, the work of uh, Damian could actually uh, was transferred into an effective uh, bound, and by that is again that exponential degree bound on the, in the Kobayashi conjecture. So and then uh, today, um, well, I will not say too much about the proof, but um, I will say at least a, a few words about this, um, the, how the proof actually goes uh, with the, for the polynomial uh, case. Okay, so um, if you have any, you have any questions? No. Then, um, so um, uh, this uh, key object in the in the strategy of the Mai and CU is uh, the so-called jet bundles. And that's how actually this uh, problem uh, links up with the Tom polynomials. So in, it's a kind of a fibered version of that, of the jet. So we take a, if uh, the k-jet bundle, so we take a smooth projective uh, variety x, and we define a k-jet bundle over that. And so uh, it's just basically this uh, formed by as a set, uh, is the set of, uh, K jets of holomorphic maps from C to X. So, and it's a vibration over X because you can send um, a, a jet to uh, F of zero, right? So, so in other words, uh, the the fiber of this uh, jet K jet bundle is just the same as we had we, we have seen before. This JK one and is just a set of jets, the jet space uh, of um, from C to Cn. So, um, and of course, now we have this uh, action of reparameterization action, which I described before, diff k. But in this case, this is a fibervised action because this is now a family version of this previous uh, problem. So, and I put down here the, the, the action just to see at least once what this diffeomorphism group looks like. So this is a linearization of this action. So you see that this diffeomorphism group is an upper triangle matrix group. You can parameterize it using uh, its dimension is k. And you see that this is actually a, um, a C star extension of the, of the unipotent part. Uh, so the unipotent part uk is, is the same, is this when you take off of one to be one. And, uh, and it's generated along the first, parameterized along the first row. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's, you see that the weights along the diagonal are increasing. So the weights are one, two, three, up to K. And in particular, this means that the, the weights of the action of this C star on the Lie algebra of, of the unit of, of, of U uh, is, are positive. So these weights are positive and, and therefore this group is something which satisfies this uh, condition, which we work with uh, when we talk about non-reductive GIT. So, so this is a, a positively graded uh, uh, group. And, and as, as I mentioned before, this was kind of a very uh, a motivating example in the developing, in developing the theory. So, um, because we somehow, it's, it's already, a, uh, it's a, seems to be a very simple group, but already the action on, and is, is very complicated. And the moduli, jet moduli space is, is, a, is something highly non-trivial. So, uh, and then the strategy goes as follows. So you, you, you can take this jet uh, space, so the, 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 the bundle of uh, K jet bundle over X, and then we can identify algebraic differential operators as polynomial function on, on J K X. And so locally in uh, 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 such a differential operator looks like that. So it's a polynomial in the derivatives of F. And then uh, where the, the coefficients are holomorphic coefficients on X, and then, uh, of course, there is this C star, this uh, weighting. So there is a C star action, which C star, C star this sits in the diff K, which gives you a grading on this um, space. And so Green and Griffiths introduced in 78 this, uh, they first studied this uh, sheaf of algebraic differential operators of order K and a weighted degree M. So, um, and uh, it was uh, Demai actually who in introduced the sub bundle of that uh, you know, um, observing that geometrically, what really happens is that we uh, somehow uh, this uh, sub bundle catches the the the, the key properties uh, much better because somehow we'll talk about uh, not just maps, but we talk about images of these um, holomorphic maps, which are kind of 
in, in invariant under the reparameterization. So, so we define this uh, sub bundle EKM of the green green Griffiths bundle. So these are just uh, elements which are uh, of this uh, bundle, which are invariant under this polynomial polynomial reparameterizations. So it's in in ours, uh, you know, it's very simple object here is just we have these polynomial functions on JKX, and there is a natural uh, diff K action on, on fiberwise action on this bundle, and this bundle EKM consists of the diff K invariant uh, uh, fun polynomial functions. And so intuitively what we want, uh, we see is that, um, uh, you know, the, the sum of this, uh, if you sum over uh, M, which is just a weighted degree, then um, uh, of this Demali bundle, that what you get is the U invariant part of the green Griffiths bundle. And this should be somehow be the diff K invariant uh, part of the functions on, on, on JKX, which, you know, this last equation is if, if what we expect is that whenever you have a diff invariant part of something, then it must be the, the polynomial functions on, the, on some quotient, right? So it must be some polynomial functions on the quotient of JKX mod diff K. But this object is not well defined, right? This quotient. This is just a fiberwise action. And it's not clear how to think of this. So to make this sense, what we should do, we, we, we want to take some meaningful projective completion of this quotient such that uh, which actually comes from with uh, the tautological line bundle over this uh, projective completion, uh, OPN1, and then uh, which is restricted to this quotient. And then um, what we expect that uh, sections of this uh, bundle give you invariants. So, and that's actually the, the strategy which works out and, and that's how you connect um, but you see, the question is how how this um, how this meaningful com uh, completion actually looks look like. So um, I will actually refer this quotient as the moduli of cages of holomorphic curves, and then uh, following the strategy, and especially uh, uh, we actually come to this conclusion, which is a fact. I just take it as a fact that somehow the the Gringerfield's line conjecture follows from the positivity of certain cohomological intersection numbers on the moduli of jets. So if you if you want to take some at least one message from today that this is the message, so somehow this is the link between the hyperbolicity problem and algebraic geometry and and kind of uh, non-reductive GIT. So so there is a certain uh, intersection uh, number which which um, so integral of some churn numbers of some bundles which we want to prove, want to be a positive, and that actually implies uh, the green griffiths lang conjecture. So uh, there are three different, in, in the literature, there are three different compactifications of this quotient. And then one is uh, constructed by uh, Demai, which is what we call the Demai assembly bundle. This is a tower of projective bundles. It's a smooth compactification, and it was used for over 30 years to, to attack this conjecture. And uh, it was used by the Vario Mac and Russo uh, in the 2009 paper. Um, the problem is that uh, the kind of somehow um, intersection theory. Um, so um, using this model, uh, you, one can prove that it's impossible to get better than exponential bound in, the, in these hyperbolicity conjectures. The curving a component uh, of the puncture Hebrew scheme, this is another comp compactification. This is what I explained before. And then, uh, so what we did with uh, Andras Senesh, we can actually turn it into here and then uh, we, can we can develop some intersection uh, theory on this. Uh, and, uh, but, but the problem is that, um, and then actually what happens is that uh, assuming some positive conjectures on, on Tom polynomials, this will uh, imply the polynomial uh, uh, green Griffiths line conjecture. But as I said before, the, the, for, the problem with the, this formula is, this, is the presence of this QK, which is highly is not known and it really depends and, and uses borrowed geometry. So the third uh, like, uh, uh, obvious uh, candidate is, is the non-reductive GIT quotient. So we take some compactification of the jet, uh, this jet, uh, K-jet bundle first. And then when this is actually compact, then we can actually define the non-reductive GIT by diff K. And that's what actually we can use. So, 
So, um, and then, uh, you know, in this non deductive geotic quotient, we use this fact and somehow uh, use the losing the developed uh, intersection theory. Last year, we can prove the um, this polynomial uh, being visible and conjecture. So, I will not go into the details because I think it's already, yeah. So, um, so I uh, just uh, want to quickly go through again uh, this uh, non relative geotic construction, but I, really quickly because that was already explained. But uh, so I only need this very, very simple setup where we have a U hat action. So this is just a, a C star extension of a unipotent group. And actually, um, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, I probably I can just leave this because I don't I don't I do not say anything new here. So there is a construction. This is the construction part, uh, which uh, you know uh, quickly uh, I explained here. But I think it's not necessary because you already seen this in the in the uh, previous two talks. And um, and then uh, what is more important is that how to uh, compute cohomology on of this on this non-reductive quotient. So so let me uh, say a little bit more about this. So let's assume that X is a projective variety and uh, with a, with a linear action of some uh, U hat, which is a positively graded uh, C star extension of a unipotent group. And this is an action which is um, linearized using an ample line model L. And so we assume that everything is nice. So uh, semi-stability equals stability. Uh, and um, so that this U, U hat theorem has the simplest form. Then what we can do actually, this is actually the link. I think that was a question. Um, uh, uh, Florent actually asked the, uh, this uh, wiki's talk is uh, what's the connection of the constructed non-reductive GIT quotient and symplectic geometry. So. So in this case, when you have this embedding uh, of X into this um, projective space, uh, this actually gives you a, a canonical linearization and the canonical U hat moment map. So it's the U hat moment map is, this, is, is, the, is the one which you, you, you would do like uh, as a first idea. So, so you compose the GL moment map with the projection of, of the dual of the Lie algebra of GL to the to the dual of the Lie algebra of U hat, so that's that's actually what what is a logical step to do. So that, that's what we call a U hat moment map. And then uh, last year we proved that uh, this moment map is actually is uh, is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the right one in the sense that um, the uh, the zero level set for this moment map is contained in in the semi stable equal stable locus for U hat. And in fact, of course, this semi-stable stable locus is U hat invariant, and this embedding of of uh, of this uh, U hat sweep of the of the zero level set induces a homomorphism, right? So that's somehow the uh, picture which we have seen uh, in the reductive case that was uh, proved by uh, Francis in the thesis. So, so what we can see here is the right hand side is the GIT quotient by U hat. On the left hand side, we have the uh, uh, symplectic reduction by S1 because S1 is the maximum compact subgroup in, in U hat, right? U hat only contains the reductive group in U hat is just a C star. So the maximum compact subgroup is, a, in, is an S1. And that's exactly uh, the, the analog for, in the, for the reductive case. So, and then what Alloy is actually mentioned that uh, fur furthermore, we have this uh, nice. Uh, Stratification of of uh, X min this Bialyski Birula stratum, which is uh, which allows us to compute Betti numbers, but this is not important for now. But this is what actually Elo is uh, explained. So um, uh, what we need, in fact, is kind of it's a little bit more, not just Betti numbers, but also cohomology and and uh, and the integration over these quotients. And let me explain a little bit this. So it actually goes back to uh, uh, work of Sean Martin. Uh, on in the reductive case, so uh, it, the the idea is how can you relate uh, the cohomology of 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 the GIT quotient by a reductive group G and the GIT quotient by its maximal torus T. And so Schumer had, has this uh, diagram, which actually connects the two. So we have uh, X mod G, which is uh, using the reductive uh, uh, moment map description. Is equal to the zero level set for the k, k is the maximum complex subgroup in G. So G is now a complex uh, reductive group. 
divided by k. And then uh, we have the, tor uh, the GIT quotient by the torus, which is just the zero level set for the torus action divided by T, which is the maximum compact subgroup. And then there is an intermediate space, which is you take the uh, zero level set for K, but quotient out by only T. And that's somehow the key, a key step. So we can define uh, for any weight of, uh, uh, of T, we can define a line bundle L uh, alpha, which is associated to, uh, uh, to this weight, which is a line bundle over this uh, quotient X mod T. So we have this uh, bundle here and it tells, and, the, and then um, Show Martin tells us that, that uh, this set here is, is, sits in this bigger one and it's, and it's actually cut out by a section of, of uh, it's a zero locus of a section of this bundle. Whereas is there a similar nice description of this uh, projection, this vibration, where we can see, we can describe the, um, the vertical uh, tangent uh, bundle using this. So actually this is the sum over all positive, uh, or for all root, uh, positive roots, and this is for, for negative roots, and this is for all positive roots. And then uh, we have three classical results, which actually tells us that the, com which links and connects the cohomology of the G quotient and the, and the torus quotient in some way. And, um, and then uh, in particular, um, uh, the integral of any uh, form on uh, X mod G can be connected to the integral over X mod T. We have to multiply this form by uh, the Euler class. It's kind of this E is just the product of the roots of, uh, of the reductive group. So that's, that's a very simple connection. So in the non-reductive case, we can hope for a similar picture. And in fact, it works out in a, in a similar way. So without giving the uh, explicit the details, let me uh, just uh, list the, re yeah, the results. So the first result is that the cohomology of, of a U hat quotient can be connected to the cohomology of the C star quotient. And then, uh, and that's the second result is what the important for us that it, it, there's a, a connection between the intersection numbers. So here we, we have to multiply the form by this uh, V of U is just, uh, this is just the product. What is this? This is the product of all negative weights and the product of the weights of the C star action on the Lie algebra of U. Well, let me, let me repeat this, right? So what we have is that we have the C star sitting in U hat and that has uh, some positive weights on, uh, under the adjoint action on the Lie algebra of U of the unipotent uh, subgroup. So we have some positive weights and this is just the product of those, right? So, so and then uh, once you actually have an integral over the uh, C star quotient, you can apply the classical reductive uh, Jeffrey curve uh, formula to reduce this, um, to, to uh, you know to, to to reduce integration over over uh, a certain subset of fixed points or the fixed point locus, but in this case, in this non-reductive picture, it's just going to be Z min. So Z min is the minimum weight space for the for the action, which you already use we have seen before. So we have this uh, non-reductive Jeffrey curve type formula, which is crucial for us. So this is what makes this um, non-reductive Jeffrey quotient. Uh, really effect, uh, efficient is that we have a nice intersection theory uh, on them. So let me, uh, I, I actually finish uh, in, in five minutes. It just, I just list the, the main theorem. So, so from the last, uh, so what we, um, we proved, uh, the first, uh, as I mentioned, is from last year, we proved the, the polynomial green Griffiths and Kobayashi conjectures for generic uh, smooth projective hypersurfaces with polynomial degree. And these are the uh, polynomials, uh, the degree which we come, which we get from, from the calculation. So it's roughly speaking n to the six, right? So that's what we can say. And then, um, um, and then the other uh, question is, uh, is another problem is the Tom polynomial and the Tom polynomials of Morian singularities. So this is actually uh, really just a recent result, which, um, and I hope um, the paper will be available online in a, in a, in a couple of days. So we, uh, for, we, we have this formula. So this is a, which I will not explain, uh, but at least I show you some, um, uh, 
pictures instead. So, so this tomium is going to be an iterated residue with respect to uh, k variables, so z1 up to zk. So when we talk about residue, we ha I have to give you a rational expression. So let's see uh, this one. This part here is just really you see the churn, uh, the churn classes, the total churn classes for of Tn minus Tn. So that was actually the uh, Heflige Koshinsky result that uh, this should only depend on on this difference bundle, right? So that's okay. And then uh, this is this rational expression is slightly different than the one before, but it's a, it's actually a sum over some. Uh, so what is this sum? The sum uh, runs over some leaves of some uh, rooted trees. These trees actually um, encode you the, the blow up process, which I mentioned before, to get this jet space, jet K. And that uh, blowing up process entirely based on uh, just toric combinatorics of certain partition polyhedra. So it certainly, it definitely avoids, uh, it doesn't involve borrowed geometry. It only involves uh, uh, blowing up along monomial ideals, and in fact, even better, uh, uh, blowing up along subspaces of affine spaces. So it's just the simplest possible case. And then uh, you can think of this formula as being like a partial uh, decomposition, uh, fraction decomposition of, of the previous formula. So it gives, certainly gives rise to some something which we haven't seen before, right? So, and okay, so that's. I think this is a. This is uh, the theorem. So let me show you an example. So for k equals four, this is the blow up tree, which um, which whatever it means. And um, and what we can see here is that we have these four uh, r red uh, leaves of this rooted tree. Um, these are the four contributions, but in fact only two of them contribute to this uh, formula. And what we get is that TP four is equal to this. Um, this uh, residue here. So, so, so I think uh, I stop here and then, and just as the very last message which you can take uh, uh, from today is that this is an identity which you, I think it's, you know, it's a non-trivial identity which drops out from these calculations because the one, the, the left-hand side comes from the new formula, the right-hand side from the, new, from the old formula. And, and um, but in general, you see for higher K, for K at least six or seven, and higher, this new formula is is uh, is highly more computable than the old formula. I think so. I stop here and thank you for your attention. So thanks for the talk. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, if not, we'll thank Greg again.